Hi, everybody. Hi. I think we had a little bit more success today getting started. Today, we are going to be working on our second video in our Learn to Knit Socks series. Um, I am Deborah, and I am working on Magic Loop. So today, we are going to be knitting uh, the heel flap. Let's go over the part of the sock that we are talking about. So here is a sock right here. We are going to be, we, we've already cast on the top, we've knit the rib, knit the leg, and now we're going to be working on this little section right here, which is the heel flap. So I'm gonna take this off of the sock blocker to show you. We've got a few people here who have joined already in our live video series. So hi, for those of you who have joined. All right. Hopefully this video will go a little more smooth today. Okay, this is the heel flap. So we started here worked our cuff, our leg, and we're going to be doing this heel flap. It is a rectangular piece of fabric. And if you look at it, we've got some interesting pattern happening here. These are series of or columns of slip stitches. Erica Brown says, hi from San Diego. Hi, Erica. Um, these slip stitches make a more dense fabric and this dense fabric helps your sock on the heel last a little bit longer so that when it wears in your shoe and it rubs it up against your shoe, it's going to just hold up a little bit longer. It also creates a little bit more um, pull in on the sock which helps it hug your heel a little bit better. And so I'm going to show you how we do this step. So I hope those of you who have joined us before have finished your homework and are to the heel flap and are ready to start. So I'm gonna get my sock here. And this yarn I showed you last time, this is called um, Victoria. That's the name of this colorway and it is by Vintage Fairy LLC. Um, on she is on Etsy now you can knit this leg however long you like um, I usually like a really long sock but this is how much I got done before this video started so what we're going to do is we are going to no longer be knitting in the round like we did before we are going to simply be working focusing on working on one needle only so half of our stitches and we work back and forth for the heel flap here. So what we're going to do is we want to start on, oh, Emily's here watching, the pressure is on. Emily already did her heel flap video. <laughs> so I'm pulling out the back needle, which is our work, working needle, and we are going to be working across half of our stitches. I had cast on 64 stitches, so half of my stitches will be 32. And we're going to work back and forth in a slip stitch pattern that I have right here. So the right side, row one, we are going to slip one, and I'm going to show you how we do that. We're going to slip it as if to purl and knit one. And we're just going to do that back and forth, back and forth until we get to the end. And we should always be ending with a knit one. And then when we get to row two, we're going to slip one and purl all the way across. So I'm going to show you how that works. Did everybody finish their homework? Are you to this point now? I hope so. Okay, so I've got my needle underneath the thread and I'm going to slip, actually just a minute, this is gonna bug me. Slip as if to purl. So that means I'm going to slip my needle straight in this direction and slide it off. And then I'm going to insert it to knit and knit one because we are on the right side. Remember our pattern, slip one, knit one. It's pretty easy to remember. I'll keep it here for reference. Slip one, knit one. Now we're going to slip as if to purl and knit one. Slip one, knit one. 
slip one, knit one. And this is just pretty simple to remember. And once you get a rhythm going, it just goes pretty quickly. Slip one, knit one. You can see I'm a tapper. I always tap my needles. Not always, but when I'm doing socks, for the most part, I do. And I'm ending here with a knit one. Because we have even number of stitches, we end with a knit one that way. Now, because we're no longer working in the round, we are going to flip this around and work on the back side. So let's readjust our magic loop needles, slide that needle back in that we were just working with. Actually, I don't know why I just did that. We don't need to do that. I'm using it. <laughs> Pull it back out. And now let's follow on the wrong side, row two. This is where we slip the first stitch as if to purl. And then we purl all the way across the rest of the stitches. We don't do any of the slip one purl one, slip one, purl one. We just slip one and purl all the way across the rest of the stitches. What this will do is this will create the rectangle of fabric that I showed you at the beginning. And the slipping every other stitch on the front side creates those columns of denser fabric. Oh, I got something here. There we go. Okay, now let's turn it back to the other side. We're going to continue this pattern on, and we're going to continue it on for uh, this, this two row repeat, um, 16, no, 32 rows. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 32 rows if you have 64 stitches on your sock. Essentially what we're doing is we are working at the number of rows that, uh, the same number of rows of stitches that we have on our needle. I have 32 stitches, I'm doing 32 rows. If you have 60 stitches, you will do 30 rows. If you have 68 stitches, you will do 34 rows. If you have 70 stitches, no, 72 stitches, you'll do 36 rows. Does that, does that make sense? Hopefully it makes sense. I'm starting again, slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one. I am working on my third row now And I'm going to show you another way that you can determine how many rows you have done in just a minute. Yep. Slip one, knit one. And I'm ending with a knit. So you can keep track of it a couple of different ways. Probably the very easiest way is a row counter. I just finished my third row. So I can keep track of it that way. Um, or as I get further along, you can actually count the slip stitches. You can count them in the column. I'm gonna show you, let's see if we can see it here really well. Let's get close. Right here, we can see here's a slip stitch, here's a slip stitch, here's one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, so, so on. You can count that many. For every slip stitch, that is actually two rows or this full repeat. So we just continue back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on here. This is actually, oh, 
I bumped my stand. Sorry about that. Um, what did I do here? I was getting ready to knit, not to purl. Remember, we're going to slip the first stitch as if to purl. We're on the wrong side. And then we're going to purl across. This is actually a pretty simple process. If you know how to knit and you know how to purl, then this should be pretty simple. When we get to the end, I'll turn it around and we'll see if we can count those pearl columns. So I've got my row counter. I just finished row number four. Let's get up really close here and have a look at what we've got. We did four rows, which means we completed both of these rows two times. So we should have two slip stitches in each column. So if you can look here really closely, we have one slip stitch here, and we have two slip stitches here. So you can actually keep track of it that way rather than using a row counter. But if you're not comfortable with um, keeping track of it this way, if you just feel like it's a little bit hard for you to see those clearly, then use a row counter until you're really comfortable with that. Now we need to go back and forth and back and forth. Like I said, um, on my sock, I need to do that 32 times or 16 slip stitches. But then I need to finish by knitting row one one more time. Because when I go to start the heel flap, I start my heel flap on the wrong side. So I slipped one, knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one. All right. So let's hear from some of you who are watching. How are you feeling about this? Do you feel like this makes sense? Slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, and we end with a knit one. And we just finished row five. It's pretty simple. What this is going to do also is this is going to give us on the edge by slipping the the first stitch on the right side and slipping the first stitch on the wrong side. It's going to give us these stitches that look kind of like a chain right here and right here and right here. And these are going to make it easier for us to pick up when it's time to do our gusset. So we've got slip stitch here and here and right there and that's where we will go in to pick up. And so that's the reason that we slip the first stitch on each side. Now if you don't slip the first stitch the world doesn't come to an end. Sometimes I forgot on my first few pairs of socks and I could fudge it a little bit. Um, but that's, that's okay. Now, if you have a foot that has a much wider instep, like right here, if this part of your foot is really quite wide and you really struggle getting socks to fit across here, you could actually knit a longer heel flap. That will give us more room in this portion later on. So you could you could actually repeat this one or two or three more times. But 
you don't want to do it too many times unless you've really got a wide foot because that will just give you a lot more fabric than you think it will. So that's the general formula for most socks is however many across the, the stitches that you were working across on one side, that's how many rows you're going to knit. All right, that's actually a pretty short video. So let's ask, see if we have any questions. If we have any questions, then we can answer those before we finish here. I will do this last wrong side row. I just slipped one and now I'm going to purl. Now, if you are joining in on this cow, on this knit along, we would love for you to share your progress. would like if you went to Instagram or other social media and share your progress using the hashtag MyFirstSocksCal. That way we can see it. You could even tag me in your pictures if you'd like to. I am Indigo Chicken Dolls on Instagram. You could tag Emily. She is Salt City Knits on Instagram. We would love to see your pictures. You could also go into our Ravelry group. Under the groups tab, you can search Meanwhile at the Castle. And we have a discussion thread there where we have our schedule. And we also, uh, in that same thread, you can share your progress or ask any questions that you might have. So you can see that we now have a different pattern right here happening. There's our heel flap. And it's also pulling in just slightly. I told you it's going to make a tighter, more snug fabric so it'll hold, grip your heel better. Okay, so we haven't had any questions, which is good. That must mean I must be answering things before you even ask them. But we would love for you to join us again. Join me if you want to watch how to do the next step. Um, after you've finished your homework of finishing this heel flap, we will be doing the heel turn and the gusset, and I will be doing that on March 6th at 7 p.m., that would be 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So we will turn the heel, pick up stitches along the heel flap, and knit the gusset decreases. That is the section we talked about, turning the heel, pick up stitches, and knit the gusset decreases. That is the next video that we will have in this series, and I will be doing that with Magic Loop. Or you could watch Emily on March 7th at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, and she will be doing the same thing on DPNs. Um, always check in the Ravelry group and on our Instagram right beforehand to make sure that we haven't changed the date or the time because sometimes emergencies happen with sick kids or who knows what, but that is our plan. All right, thanks for joining. I'll see you again on March 6th.